coming up. South Yorkshire. South Yorkshire moves into England's toughest level of coronavirus restrictions. Lunchtime News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good afternoon. If you live in Sheffield, Rotherham, Doncaster or Barnsley, the South Yorkshire region, from midnight on Saturday, you will be subjected to England's toughest coronavirus restrictions. Pubs, casinos, betting shops and soft play are all to close, but schools will stay open. Local leaders secured £41 million from the government to support closed businesses and to help develop the track and trace system. This swift move to Tier 3 is in contrast to days of wrangling over a financial deal for Greater Manchester. Today, the Prime Minister said that the £60 million rejected by officials there will still be given out to the region's boroughs. Our political correspondent, Paul Brand, has the latest. Uh, so what now for Greater Manchester, our political correspondent? Coronavirus restrictions in Scotland have been extended for another week. Pub England footballer Marcus Rashford has said enough is enough ahead of a crunch House of Commons vote on free school meals. He wants ministers to change policy so children continue getting their dinners through the Christmas holidays. On social media this morning, the footballer warned ministers that this is not going away and neither am I. Well, Neil Connery is here. Neil there are warnings today about the long-term effects of allowing our children to spend more time online during the pandemic. Still to come. Postal workers for Royal Mail will now pick up parcels from people's homes. And finally, scientists at NASA were celebrating last night after successfully landing on an asteroid 200 million miles from Earth. After seven years of planning and with a price tag of a billion dollars, experts hope the spacecraft managed to grab a sample of the asteroid. But we'll have to wait a little longer to find out, as Faye Barker reports. And that is it this lunchtime. Mary Nightingale will be here with the ITV Evening News at 6.30. The news where you are follows the national weather. But for now, from everyone here on the lunchtime team, bye-bye. Hello again. Now the main stories in London. The Prime Minister has criticised the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, for his handling of Transport for London's finances. During Prime Minister's questions, Boris Johnson said the Mayor had already bankrupted Transport for London and said making up the deficit was his responsibility. A teenager is in a life-threatening condition after being stabbed in Clapton last night. London Ambulance Service say one in 10 incidents attended by crews during the coronavirus pandemic involved mental health. An exhibition showcasing the most creative designs from the last year opens today at the Design Museum. The and a free performance of Adam Kay's This Is Going To Hurt will take place in the West End tomorrow, especially for NHS staff. All right, weather now, here's Sally. And that is all from us for now. I'll be back here at six. Until then, enjoy your afternoon. Bye bye. Coming up, two people have died in a gas explosion in Ealing. Plus, Boris Johnson wades in on the row to bail out TfL. Tonight, the blame game over the TfL bailout. The mayor's Good evening. Higher fares, a tax to pay for public transport and a huge congestion charge, though. Now the conditions attached to an almost £5 billion bailout of TfL. If those happen, Boris Johnson says Sadiq Khan, the man who took over from him as mayor, is to blame. Mr Khan says Londoners shouldn't face being punished in the future for following the advice to stay off public transport during the pandemic. London's mayor described the terms of the bailout as unacceptable and vindictive. Martin Stew reports. Powers to be given to City Hall. Two people have died after a building collapsed in West London. London Fire Brigade are searching through the wreckage after a gas explosion in a shop in South Hall in West London earlier this morning. Well, 
London's nightlife has been hard hit by the tighter COVID restrictions, banning households from mixing. And businesses say things were made worse by a letter from the Met Police advising them to ID customers to make sure they live in the same household. Well, after a furious backlash, branding it misleading and unlawful this afternoon, the Met have withdrawn that advice. Well, Michael Kill is the chief executive of the Nighttime Industries Association and he joins me now. Uh, Michael, thanks so much for talking to us this evening. Pretty strong opposition to this advice from the Met. It forced a U-turn. Um, advice that you said was unlawful and misleading. Um, that there was and there is going to be an issue with enforcement of the rule. Tier two level at the moment, which is um, high. Um, would things be better for pubs and bars if we just went into another lockdown and they were forced to close and they got more support? Next tonight, it is a lettings agency which, like any other, helps people find a new home to move to. The difference with rent start in Walton-on-Thames is that the people who they work with don't have a home. The aim of the UK's first letting agency on the high street, exclusively for homeless people, is to remove any shame or stigma. Antoine Allen reports. Now, few working in the NHS will have heard of Koffer Rola Abeni Pratt, but hers is an inspirational story. She was the first black nurse to work in the NHS back in the 1940s, when she worked at Guy's and St Thomas's, where 70 years on, they are celebrating the path she paved for so many others. Our senior correspondent, Monke Phillips, reports. Well, from nurses to a former doctor saying thank you to NHS staff who have worked tirelessly throughout the pandemic. Adam Kay quit the profession to become a comedian and author. Uh, he wrote a book about that decision. This is going to hurt. It became a bestseller. Well, he has a live show based on the book. And tomorrow night he's putting on a free performance at the Apollo in the West End, especially for NHS workers. And I'm very pleased. Now, cast your mind back to the 1970s. One of the first punk bands was dominating the charts, both here and in the US. Back then, the Damned were famous for their vampire-themed costumes and dark lyrics. Today, they announced a comeback tour for next summer, but can't predict exactly how that will look with current restrictions. One thing they do know is they can't wait to get back on stage. They spoke to Will Davies. The main headlines in London this evening too. Sally's here. I'll tell you what's unacceptable, Sally. Um, the weather today, <laughs> awful. <laughs> so Sally, things improving a little bit tomorrow, but today, definitely a day for indoor activities. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. What do a balloon dress, a coronavirus hospital and a seesaw have in common? I don't know. I, hope you're... <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to get one of those balloon dresses. Uh, that is it. Uh, we are back with the latest after ITV News at 10. Coming up, Mary with the ITV Evening News. But from me and the rest of the London team, bye-bye.